they like well you know your hair is going to fall off and I'm like your hair is going to fall off <laughs> like what so I'm going to be flat chested and bald <laughs> like what is life <laughs> So I'm Zayn Marie, I'm 32 years old, I am a breast cancer survivor and I'm my nephew's favourite auntie, the ones who don't have other aunties. <laughs> really in 2016, um, I had started, first time in my life, I started using birth control. I was like, Heavy exercising, trying to eat good, everything like that. And then I noticed like there was a lump. And I'm I always like doubt and second guess. So I'm like, is this really like my short feeling this is like random in the bathroom? And then I talked to my best friend and he's like, call the doctor and just go and see, it's probably nothing. I <laughs> I called her and she's like, Okay, go to the ultrasound. I have an ultrasound done, mammogram, everything. So I did and the doctor, he was like, it looks like a fibrinoma, nothing to be worried about. Six months, you'll come back and we'll do, we'll do a second look, make sure everything's clear. Okay, six months would have been in November. So I keep on going along. I'm like, I think it's getting bigger. Like, your feel is like, I'm sure it's getting bigger. You're not seeing this, look at it. I'm like, sure, my friends too, like we go to the gym. So I'd be like, look at this. You're not seeing this, how you not seeing it's like no you're overreacting, it's like normal, nothing, I not see nothing. I was like, okay, but I feel like something like I don't know. The doctor told me six months, so I waited six months and I went back. And um when I went back he is like, I don't like how you're looking. So we'll bring it back in to do a fine needle biopsy or something. Painful. Not nice at all. Not oh, nice at all. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, I'm gonna call you once we get the results. Should be fine. Okay. So they call me, I think, like a Friday. And they're like, okay, we need to come in Monday. First thing. And I was like, okay. So I went with one of my friends and she was in the lobby and she's like, it's only really taking kind of long. So I sit down and my doctor's like, he's smiling. He's smiling. So I'm like, he's like, okay, so it's not good news. So you have breast cancer and he's smiling. So I'm like, you're joking. Like, you're joking. You're joking. This is 2016, four years ago. Like yes. It was, yeah, right after my birthday. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. So I'm like, no. I'm like, What's he saying? He's like, no, it's, it's not bad. I'm giving material to read up on it. He's like, the good thing is, you know, we get it early. So, you know, we could, we could call, like, if you could go away to do it. I could recommend doctors locally, if anything. I'm like, okay, you know, I had a cry. And then I went outside and I told my friend, and I cried again. And then, shh where my doctor was wasn't too far from where my sister was so I called my sister and I'm like um so my doctor told me I have breast cancer um I don't know what to do I'm like I, and then she's like well you know daddy's sister had it and I'm like what? <laughs> So my dad's sister, one of my dad's sister, died from, from breast cancer, but she had a different type. I think she had the tubular variety I had in doctor, in doctor carcinoma, invasive, D, I, C, F, let me see. Medical history. Yeah, invasive ductal carcinoma, and she had like a tubular one that's like real aggressive. She had it, and his mom had it. But back in a, I don't know if they knew what type she had, but she, I think she passed away in her 40s or something like that. So, it was like, oh, so we had history. 
I didn't know he had a history. So, right, so then my doctor was like, okay, we should do some genetic testing just to see if, you know, there's a genetic mutation or So like all this time, maybe like a week or two, um, I even went to St. James to see about possibly starting chemotherapy because um, the doctor in Mount Hope had recommended it, so he, he referred me to there. So I went um, I went to I went to St. James to meet with a doctor to see like what type of chemotherapy treatment I would need. They're like, well, you know, your hair is going to fall off, and I'm like, your hair is going to fall off. <laughs> What? So I'm going to be flat chested and pulled. <laughs> like, what is life? <laughs> so I, I like, I delayed that because I was like, my hair. They're like, oh, it's just hair. And I'm like, you was just hair, but I'm gonna be boobless and bald. Like, what? And then you'd have like I had people saying, just take both off. Like, why are you bothering to keep it? Like, just cut it out and then be done with it. I'm like, listen, all my life I want to have kids. All my life. I would like the experience of breastfeeding my children. I can't do that if I have no boobs. Like no shade to like I, I follow someone on Instagram. She had a bilateral mastectomy and then almost the same type of cancer as I had, and then she's had two kids. She's she didn't. So they have the bilateral mastectomy where they remove the nipples and then they have the nipple sparing mastectomy. Where they, once the tissue behind the nipple is clear of cancer, they leave the nipple intact. And that was something that I was interested in doing if it was possible. But still, I was, I don't know, the pictures of the crumpled paper bag. Because that's what the skin looks like and then after you radiate it, the skin shrinks. So it gets tighter. And then to try and stretch it after all of that, it doesn't stretch right. It's a painful process. <laughs> but like to radiate it before stretching, it doesn't stretch as much. Your skin gets tighter. And when you're young already, your skin doesn't have that much stretch to it. So just, they just didn't want me to <laughs> tell my best life. <laughs> so that had even, um, contemplated they do aside from the mastectomy there is the lumpectomy where they just remove the lump but my boobs are small already so if i did that i'd have a big old dent and then it didn't make no sense either because a lot of people after they still had to do radiation so like i don't really want to do radiation because i've seen some not so nice pictures I went, I found out that I had breast cancer. Um, I started looking for doctors and because I had gone to the doctor at Mount Hope, he referred me to St. James to start chemotherapy. So usually what they do, usually you do surgery, then chemo, then radiation, if there's anything. So depending on if you have cancer in your lymph nodes then past like you said like the first couple three or something then they'd recommend radiation to try to get everything out and chemo is to treat the whole body in case it got anywhere else but in my case because i was still looking for a doctor to do my surgery um they recommended that i do chemo because the cancer was still growing so i <laughs> It's two weeks while I'm looking around for doctors. I'm like, this thing is still getting bigger. <laughs> it's not good, it's still getting bigger. So the oncologist at St. James was like, yes, so let's um we'll start you out and we'll do it was four rounds of the red devil. <laughs> that one makes you lose all your hair. <laughs> and then four rounds of taxol. Taxotape, taxol. Which isn't as bad on the hair and making you feel like dead to the world for three weeks. But I had a bad reaction. <laughs> so I could not walk. <laughs> and I'm like, usually after, I'm like super drowsy. I didn't know they used to like eat. I didn't know what they were giving me. But they would come and they would, you know. Apparently they give you stuff in case you had an allergic reaction, they give you stuff to like sleep through it. 
and I was like, all right. So next day or something, I got hand for dinner. So my hands, um, the soles of my feet, they were swollen, right? I'm like super sensitive. I couldn't like walk to the bathroom. I could like I had to get a wheelchair, and like that was the first time I saw my dad cry. Like, cause like first four rounds of chemo, like yeah, lost the hair. Um, like we expected it, so I had cut my hair, and then when it started falling out, I think I had gone to the states to see my doctor. So the first, first, time, or the second time. And um, I was just like random. I was sitting by my aunt. Uh, I went to the bathroom, and like every time I would take off my head wrap, they would be here. I was like, you know what? I tired, and I rub it out. <laughs> I rubbed it all out, and they're like little fine strands. And then like fine, okay. So I was losing weight. I didn't really notice it, but everybody else is noticing it. <laughs> so I got really small. I got like, I think I got smaller than my sister, and she's small, a lot smaller than me. So that, like that was normal. Like I'd be sick for like the first, not like sick, sick. Like my first wrong. I, like I was fine. I went to the gym the next week. I'm like, yeah. And then like by the second round, I'd like I threw up after like no matter what on that first day, I would throw up. And then I'd be super drowsy for the week. And then I would like get back some energy, and I'd be like, okay, this one, nope. I was in bed because I couldn't walk around. I think. My brother had to like help me get to the bathroom. My dad had to carry me to the car when I had my appointment, and um, it was just real rough. No, it's just like random in the shower. I was not. <laughs> I was not very good about that. Just like random, pass my hand on my boob. I'm like, what in the world? And then I would keep checking because I'm aware that it's there. Uh, kid you not, I would cry when I was like, like after I found out what it was, I'm like crying every time I touched it. <laughs> so I, so I was not like, like health conscious. Yes, I'd exercise. Yes, I'd try to eat healthy and I'd stay active and all that. But to say I was like, no, I wasn't, because I didn't know that it was like family history. And but when you do have family history, they recommend getting tested earlier. Than usual. So when you go there, they always ask you, "Do you have any history of cancer? Any cancer? Breast cancer in your family?" No, <laughs> because I didn't know. And they're like, and then he was like, "Well, if I knew that you had a history, I would have tested you right away." And I was like, "Well, I didn't know." <laughs> and like back in the day, in most families, you like keep these things hush hush, and it don't make no sense. If you have it, you talk about it. it says. Just get out and open so everybody's away and everybody could take it head on. Honestly, if my nephew, like, so my sister, my husband, and my nephew were living here with me, and like I was just like going through the motions, I think I would still like wrap my head up when I was home. Um, I would try to keep my head covered, like, I would sleep a lot, I would try to watch some TV if I could, like, at one point I was just like, I'm fed up with my bed, <laughs> it hurts to even sleep in the bed, <laughs> like, my body aches, I just, I want to go out, like, I want to do stuff, but with chemo, your white blood cell count goes <laughs> shut down. And I was not very careful, like I was still working, so I would, if I had chemo, they said, oh, do chemo on Friday, so you'll have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, so like recuperate, and then like Monday, Tuesday, I'll go back out to work, but going to work means being around children, children have tunes. <laughs> so my blood count got to the point where my doctor, I had to get, um, these injections that would boost your immune system but it makes your spinal cord produce the wipe and that hurts the first time I got the shot I was like okay and then I was like it hurts to sit <laughs> I don't know what's going on <laughs> so the next time I went to my doctor I was like um so backbone hurts any idea and they're like oh yeah 
that it's a side effect because your bone marrow is producing the extra blood cells. So it's gonna be painful. Okay, thanks. You could have told me that before. <laughs> so I've been aware <laughs> of all of this. So yeah, so um, my friend and I, we'd probably go to like some off market. So like we tried to, you know, but like in the earlies, I would, from the time I had, I lost the hair, I would cover it up. Always wearing a head wrap. And then one time I was home with my nephew watching cartoons and he, so it was so hilarious. He would take it off and then he would rub my head. And I was like, okay, if he's okay with my bowl head, I could be okay with my bowl head. <laughs> So if not for my nephew, I probably would have kept my hair wrapped or wore a wig or something for the rest of the time. Like he made me comfortable with the boldness and like just, you know, being comfortable in my skin during the process. So I love him to pieces. <laughs> yeah, I had a good support system. Like there were people who would be like, are you doing this? Or chemo's the devil? Or like, okay. And then one person, like, he is like really against chemo. He's like, your aunt would have never do this. You know, she was all natural. And I'm like, well, she's not here. So I'm not going to risk not being here. <laughs> like, I want to live. I, I have things I still want to do. I, like, I'm not ready to give up. And I think like mentality through the process having a positive outlook mostly throughout the process really helps because if you mentally are not ready to fight your body is not going to be willing to fight either so i tried to keep a positive outlook as much as i could like only during like my hand foot syndrome process was i really like why <laughs> Like, and I, oh, um, I think at that point, I was also going through, like, reading the Bible. Like, I was trying to read it through. And I had reached Job. Yeah. <laughs> like, right at that point. <laughs> so I'm like, alright. He's not going to give me anything more than I can handle. I'm like, like, if not for my faith, I don't think I would have made it through. My faith, my family, and my friends. I did have like one person who was like, um, was like, why you cut your hair? Because I didn't tell, I didn't tell a lot of people initially. Because I'm like, you know what? When I finish, I do this big post and I'll be like, this is what I was doing. You can cancel. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> so like, I had somebody who's like, why you cut your hair? I hit it like it. <laughs> no, I like it here, but when it was longer, I was like, well, that sucks. <laughs> Because I can help you. It's cut. I'm like, if I like so edgy, like, like, no, you look sick. I was like, well, I am sick. So thank you. <laughs> like, I know that, like, people don't think about the comments when they, like, you don't know what someone's going through. So if I wanted it to be like, oh, I'm being edgy and I cut my hair off because I've never cut my hair, like, let me live my life. <laughs> and then, like, I had people, like, maybe they found out from somebody. And they'd be like, how are you doing? Like, all of a sudden, everything's okay. And I'm like, yeah, everything's fine. You sure everything's okay? You good? I'm like, yeah. I'm just like, well, I heard. And like, because I know you're fishing. You're fishing because we don't talk like this usually. Why are you do all of a sudden reaching out to message me like, I didn't see, like at that point I hadn't said publicly this is what I'm going through and this is what I'm dealing with. So it's like, I know you're not more, but still. Like, in your approach, I think, you know, how you, if you want to show support, like there's, there's a way to do it. I don't know, necessarily more <laughs> words. Yes, yeah, most definitely. And like just being 
able to um, stand up for myself and you know m- and make sure I'm enjoying what I have left of my life however long that may be <laughs> yes so I do have a better relationship with like most like the people in my life now and I feel like there's an honesty and there's a vulnerability there. I mean, I have lost some friends during the journey. I don't really talk to some family. <laughs> but for the most part, it has been eye-opening and just, you know, overall. It's not something that you need to go to, but... <laughs> yes, an appreciation for all that life offers. <laughs> So I did chemo, then surgery, then they started the reconstruction process, so they did the expander, and then radiation, 25 rounds. It ended on my birthday. My last round was on my birthday. It's every evening birthday. <laughs> Celebrate. Um, yeah, and then now, now I'm doing hormone therapy. So, but you menopause, well, the type of hormone therapy that I'm doing, um, my doctor said it's better, it works better, but it's usually prescribed for menopausal women. So I'm also getting a drug to put me into menopause to be able to take the tablets. Like, I don't want people to be like, yeah, you're okay, you're a child. No, I mean, it's taken a lot from me yes but you know i think i i do still have seen fish dreams <laughs> i still want to have a family i still want to get a job in my field did environmental engineering <laughs> but you know covid and <laughs> the economy yeah, so I want to, you know, make a difference using, I guess, my life experiences and however else I can. <laughs> so one thing to take away that I would like anyone who watches this to take away is to advocate for yourself. If health-wise in life and you could please advocate for yourself because as young especially young women um, a lot of younger women are being diagnosed with cancer and it's like oh it's a older people type of thing no and then doctors might be like no it's nothing to worry about always if you feel that there's something wrong go and get it checked if they're like, yes, we're young, mammograms may not pick it up to an ultrasound because our tissue is denser when we are younger. So always, always, always advocate for yourself. Not just Google, but you know, go to your doctor. You think something is wrong, go and check it out. The earlier you check it out, the better. <laughs> Early detection saves lives. <laughs>